Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to the first video in a series where we're going to be looking at how we can build certain styles, types of sounds on the Korg monologue. So in this first video, we're going to start where, I guess a lot of people would probably start with uh, an, an, a fresh mono synth in front of them, which is that we're going to put together a bass sound. Now we'll probably do a couple of videos on bass sounds because there are lots of different styles of bass sounds that we can we can make. But we're going to start with something fairly classic, nothing too aggressive or wubby or, or, or whatever. Just a nice, classic, punchy bass sound that can sort of contribute melodically as well as rhythmically to your tracks. So uh, we're just on the uh, initial patch. Um, of course, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the octave down at least one click because, you know, this is a bass sound. We don't want to be sat in a uh, in a higher register. Okay, so in the initial um, patch, what you get given to begin with is just VCO1 in sawtooth mode. Now, sawtooth uh, waveforms are nice and harmonically rich, so they react very nicely to um, cut-off frequency. But they don't um, they don't contribute a lot of bottom end because um, because of the harmonic richness they they are um, uh, their harmonics are quite uniformly spread which means that the fundamental isn't particularly emphasised so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in VCO two and I'm going to put it into triangle wave. You can hear there immediately that that is uh, giving us some bottom end weight. Nice. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do to begin with is bring my cutoff on my filter down a little bit. Um, this is a bit bright for, for a classic bass sound at the moment. Now we're going to open that filter up uh, a little bit using the uh, envelope and LFO but we'll start with it a bit more closed. So. Okay, so that's kind of the, the basis of our bass sound. Now, the first thing I want to do is give it a more punchy attack. And I'm going to do that by going into my envelope generator. I'm going to go into the um, gate envelope mode. So uh, the gate will open up the uh, VCA fully, but then we can have control over something else using the envelope generator. So I'm going to switch that over to cutoff, and I'm going to turn up the intensity a bit. Okay, maybe we'll bring that decay down a little bit so we emphasize the attack a bit much more. A bit more. Okay, so that's given the front end of the note a bit more punch. Now, if all I'm doing with my envelope generator is having an instant attack and a uh, fairly rapid decay, what I might do actually is not use the envelope generator at all. And instead, as we showed in one of the other tricks videos on the channel, if we switch our LFO into one shot mode and send it to the cutoff, and make sure that it is in sawtooth wave, so that's start very quickly and tail off, exactly how we had our EG set up. We can approximate the same thing, and that allows us to free up the envelope generator to do a couple of different things. But first, let's talk about our filter a little bit. So the first thing I might suggest that we do here, maybe, is turn up the resonance a little bit, because you want a little bit more of that honk. Now, on a lot of synths, turning up the resonance is going to rob you of a bit of bottom end, and that is true, actually, on the monologue. But as long as we keep our cutoff low, it's actually going to emphasize the low end. Um, just the way this filter design sounds. So we can be quite aggressive if we want to. Yeah, 
yeah, so that's still given us uh, bottom end uh, quite nicely. Now, the other thing that I'm going to suggest here that might be nice to play with is at the moment, every time I play a note, it's kind of coming out the same way. And the reason for that is that there's no variance uh, with velocity in how I'm playing. So I can play as hard as I like, or as soft as I like, and nothing's really changing. But it'd be quite nice to add some expressiveness into the sound. So we're going to go to edit mode, and we're going to go over to the fourth light along, make sure that we're in um, uh, the program settings. So we should be in the other settings, setting group. We're going to click across twice and we're going to go to cut off velocity and we're going to turn that up to 100%. What that's going to do is it's going to send the velocity of how uh, how I'm striking the keys to the filter cut off. And that gives us a bit more expressiveness. nice okay so um, we've got a fairly nice bass sound but I still don't think that first part of the note is punchy enough to really contribute something rhythmic to the track as well as melodic but if you remember we freed up our lovely envelope generator here so we can use it to emphasize something else now I'm gonna be a bit quirky here and first of all I'm gonna jump up to pitch so that's not uh, a good bass sound anymore, that's uh, laser gun sounds. However, having a pitch jump at the start of your note and closing it down pretty quickly, so if I turn down my decay, that's as much pitch as we had before, but much, much quicker to get back down to the original pitch. So there'll be a sweet spot there. Maybe we reduce the intensity of it. So that pitch bend at the start of the note really gives you punch to your sound. And we can fine tune the intensity to find out. Find out where that works really nicely. So that's cool. But there's another way that we could utilize the same sort of idea. And that's if we were to turn our second oscillator into sync mode. So uh, we'll talk about oscillator sync maybe in another video, but basically it's a way of using uh, pitch of an oscillator to change its harmonic content because of reasons. Uh, so if we're going to make use of oscillator sync, we're going to switch our pitch, uh, our uh, envelope generator into pitch two instead. Uh, if we make our decay much longer, we can kind of hear the effect that we've got there. Maybe give us a bit more intensity. So there's 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 the classic sync sound. That's probably a bit much for our bass sound. That's nice because we're getting up to a fifth. Fifth? Maybe not fifth. We can do a similar sort of thing and just sort of fine tune our decay and our intensity. To get a bit more punch. Personally, I quite like the straight up pitch. Like that. 
So there's one other uh, area that we might want to consider uh, for our bass sound uh, when we're building this patch, and that is the drive section. So the drive section on the monologue is is interesting. Uh, as we turn it up, it actually um, kind of darkens the sound up as well as adding more fizz to it. So we might want to add a bit of drive there. Probably go over the top. Without. It depends on what sort of track you're going to be using it in. And of course, we could go in and we could fine tune the shape controls on our uh, oscillators as well. We might find some sweet spots there. So on the sawtooth. Yeah. Seems to have hollowed it out, made it a bit more like a square wave. Maybe the same with our triangle. So as we turn it up, we're getting more mid-range, but we're losing some of our bottom end. Maybe we can we drop the octave, turn it up. It's interesting, but... Yeah. Uh, one last thing to address, depending on how we're going to be using our um, our bass sound, we might also want to consider adding a little bit of portamento. So if we... Something like that. Also want to head into the edit menu and make sure on program edit go to the first uh, section here where we've got portamento time So we might want to add some portamento as well. Something like that. So um, there are some uh, ideas, uh, starting points for when you're building a, kind of a classic punchy bass sound. Uh, I think the, the tip about the pitch envelope is a really, really useful one. It's not necessarily one that is so obvious when you come to build sounds, especially when you're tempted to send this envelope to cut off. But don't forget, we have the one shot mode here in the LFO. Uh, and that frees this up for that sort of pitch attack, which really does make a difference to the punchiness of the sound. Anyway, um, that's all for this video. I really hope that was uh, useful. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give us the thumbs up, click that like button, and also the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos on the Korg Monologue and other synthesizer stuff. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you again soon.